I'm a thick bitch, you need tempo. Fuck it up to the tempo. Chat chap in a bando, I don't wanna look like yo. Chat chap in a bando, I don't wanna look like. Hi everyone, I'm back. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. Um, I feel like I haven't sat down here in so long. Um, <clears throat> I took some time away because I wanted to figure out what I wanted to do. And when I first began um, making videos properly, um, I did it mainly about like pressing issues like body image and mental health blah, blah blah and I decided I want to go back to that because it's what matters at the moment and it's kind of what like you know I most feel passionate about passionate about <coughs> I'm really sick um so yeah I'm gonna do that I don't know what it was anyway I put up a poll on Instagram asking you if I started a body confidence slash self love series, would you um, watch it? And from the results, um, you can see that the majority would want to watch it, so that's what I'm bringing to you. Um, so before I start the actual video, you can skip along if you don't actually care, but um, the series is called Be Positive, um, and it's just like be like the letter, the letter, the letter B and positive, which basically means body positivity um, and body positive um, or like be positive. Like there's just so many meanings that you can get from it. So I was like, I'm just gonna call it that. It took me and my friend Hannah like ages to brainstorm with the concept and finally came up with one. So thanks Hannah. The series is gonna be five videos. Oh, I feel like I'm like talking really strangely, but I'm just bummed up. Um, talking about topics related to self love and body confidence. Um, I did ask on Instagram what you would like to see um, and one person replied, so sad, um, but I'm assuming that you don't care just as long as it's related to the topic of body confidence and self love as 54 people said yes and only 4 people said no so okay. Um, anyways without further ado let's get into the first part of the video. Um, <clears throat> so, I'd say from about year nine or ten, I'd say, um, it probably like kicked in properly. So before then, like, my family would be like, you know, you need to lose weight, blah, 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 but I never really thought anything of it. I was like a, I was a stubborn child. If people told me no then I would just do it anyway. So people would be like, don't eat that, I would eat out of spite. You know, be like, don't tell me what to do, so I would just eat it. Um, and then from about <clears throat> year 10, 11, starting year 10, um, like loads of people started to get boyfriends and you know, I think that's when I started to obsess about my appearance. Um, and I would just, I don't know, I don't remember ever saying anything nice about myself. I would just cry for hours and hours and hours on end um, because I didn't feel beautiful, I didn't feel worthy, um, I just felt, I literally felt ugly. I would literally look in the mirror and just cry because I just hated what was staring back at me. I would always used to call myself fat all the time. Um, I'd always used to call myself ugly. And if people didn't like me, it was because of my appearance. Um, and it was just like, you know, a snowball effect. Um, and then every day I would just obsess about food. Um, and some days I'd just be like, fuck it. And I just, eat everything that I could see um so I'd like binge um I would hide like hide snacks in my room to hide from my mum I would just keep eating them um and then I think that was like I just thought it was normal um and I think the big problems started when I was at uni and it affected me so much so that if we went on nights out, I would leave because I just felt disgusting. Um, and then in order to feel better, um, 
I would eat, I, I would use food as comfort because food has always been there for me. You know, when I'm sad and I'm happy, I would just eat. It makes me feel better. It gives me that instant gratification. Um, and it was kind of cycle, you know, I would feel sad, I would eat, you know, I would have a snack drawer in my um, room at uni where I would just used to eat everything in sight. Um, and, day, and then other days where I'd be like, I've eaten too much, I need to stop eating. But then I'd be like, I'm so hungry, so then i eat again. So it's just like a cycle, a continuous cycle um, of just obsession, you know, with food and my appearance. Um, and it would stop me going like out, out as well. So I really loved getting ready and getting dressed up and stuff, but I'd get dressed up and ready to go out and I'd be like, nope, I'm not going out, I don't feel well. I, I, I don't want to do it. Like, I don't want people to stare at me. And you know, it really, really affected me. Like, I had such poor self-esteem and I was really not confident and it was really difficult. Um, so yeah, it was really, really hard. And then I would say second year, <clears throat> I was like, right, enough's enough. I actually need to properly start losing weight. And I did um, because I joined Slimming World. Um, if you don't know what Slimming World is, I think I've spoken, of, spoken about it before, um, but it is a company that you pay to lose, to help, they help you to lose weight by giving you like a plan of foods that you can and can't eat. So it's kind of, it's not, well it is restrictive because you can't go past a certain amount of sins, um, but essentially you can have what you want within the sins, but it's still restricting yourself. Um, anyways, they would weigh you each week. And um, there was one time where I gained weight and I was so unhappy. I went home and I ordered Domino's and I just sat there and ate and ate. And I was like, what's the point? If I'm not gonna lose weight, I might as well just eat. Um, I was just sitting there and was just eating and I felt so upset. Um, I just eat. And I ate so much and I felt so guilty after. I was just like, right, I, I can't. Like, So I went into the bathroom and just threw up my food. Um, and it wasn't the first time I tried to do it. I've done it many times throughout my life. Um, and it's awful. I wouldn't recommend it. <clears throat> um, anyways, after I did that, like this is a clear memory. I just remember being like, right, I'm not, I'm gonna weigh myself every day. So I weighed myself every day and I barely ate anything. Um, and I essentially just, you know, ate bits, you know, here and there. And I just, I weigh myself after every single meal. It was not healthy at all. Safe to say the next week I did lose six pounds but in a very, very unhealthy way. It was not good at all. Um, and yeah, I just, it was, it was awful, it was, you know. I think what really helped was my friend at uni told me that I was beautiful every single day and told me I was worthy and I got away from my family who were telling me like, you know, you shouldn't eat that, you, a fat blah blah blah. I didn't have that in my ear constantly, and it kind of swapped. So instead of someone telling me negative negative things about my body, I is now being replaced by positive things. And honestly, without her, I really don't think that I would, you know, <clears throat> be okay with food now. I don't think I would be um, confident in in my skin. And I'm not saying that I'm completely cured. I'm saying I don't feel as I did like two years ago and before that I feel so much better and I know not everyone's in a position where they can get away from people saying like you know you're fat you're this you're that but if you can do it or just politely tell the people you know you're really hurting me and um I don't think my family knew how much it was affecting me um in terms of mentally mentally and physically um it was really draining me having been told like i'm big all the time and you know 
it's not a nice thing to hear and i think that's what really created the <clears throat> um my unhealthy unhealthy relationship with food um but i would be getting told that i was fat but still being given takeaways like every day for dinner which really didn't help so i had no awareness of you know healthy food um i had no awareness of like you know you can eat loads but it can be you know healthy it doesn't have to be a chinese every every single day like that's basically what i was getting when i was at home um and now i live on my own um and i have control of my food what i eat what i don't eat you know and i can eat what i want when i want and i don't have anyone in my ear being like this is bad for you you know sometimes because it happened so for so long those voices will always be in my head but i have enough power now to be like fuck off like i'm not listening to you right now and you know but sometimes so there are some days where i'm not as strong and i will give in to the voice and you know i'm not saying i'm 100 percent cured but i am saying it does get better because i don't feel like i did last time um last like before um <clears throat> so yeah that's kind of how i overcame it really um i think that i don't think that social media helps either when i was not feeling too good it would be you know emphasized by the people i was seeing on social media um so predominantly at the time i'd be following no models so every time i looked on my instagram feed it would be slim girls you know blonde five for eight whatever you know and i'd just be scrolling through you know and it's basically telling me what i'm thinking is right in order to be beautiful i have to look like this it's reinforcing my mindset already so obviously i'm going to continue what i'm doing in order to be slim and i think when <clears throat> i found my first body positive my first body positivity influencer i think that's when things started to change i realized that there are people out there in the world that look like me and are happy with you know who they are in their own skin and i realized that looking a certain way does not define you as a person there is so much more to me than just this body i'm a multifaceted woman i have so many hobbies so many talents that you wouldn't know just by looking at my appearance and if on first glance you think nah then that's your loss because you're missing out on you're missing out on getting to know someone um and I think that's what you should be judged on rather than your appearance. And I fully know that now. Um, and I learnt that, well, I know that we only have one body, we have one life. So why should I spend the whole of my life just obsessing on this one, like, one shallow thing, my appearance? Um, and again i'm not saying that i don't think about this all the time there are some days where i wake up and think oh my god why did i eat that chinese after uh, yesterday or if i have a cookie i'm like oh my god why did i have the cookie but i am strong enough now um to like feel the emotion processes it process it and just live with it um i'm more than happy that I'm never going to fully get rid of it, but I'm getting closer to, you know, accepting it, accepting my body. And hopefully you get to a point where you fully accept your body as well. Um, and I hope, <coughs> and I hope by listening to this, you realise that it's not everything, you know, I'm happy and I am not by any means um society's definition of beauty you can be happy and you know have cellulite i mean i don't think there's anyone on this earth that has zero cellulite you know i don't i'm happy and i have rolls like 
you know it's just society has shifted in the way that now slim is in you know and that's what people perceive but it's getting i think as time passes on it will change like already we're seeing the slim thick trend before you know marilyn Ma marilyn manston marilyn monroe she was curvy and everyone wanted to be curvy it's just there's no fixed standard of beauty so thank you for watching the video hopefully it was all right and i didn't waffle on too much um thank you again for watching hope you have a lovely week bye